Hey, what's going on guys? So Angular 6 has been released along with the Angular CLI 1.7. Uh, I believe version 6 is in release candidate 5 at this time. And I wouldn't recommend using it in anything that's not just experimental or, or for testing it out. I wouldn't use it in production until it's completely stable and the CLI uses it by default. Um, but with that said, I just want to go over some of what you can expect from version 6 along with version 1.7 of the CLI. And just a quick note, everything here is compiled from what I view as reputable sources, including the official documentation and logs, as well as credible articles, things like that. If anyone has anything to add or even dispute, feel free to leave a comment below. And also note that there may be changes in the future. This video is simply about what you should expect from the next release. There's a lot of info floating around, but not really any good put together summary of everything. So that's what I'm trying to do here with this video. Now, the way that Angular does its versioning, it kind of pisses a lot of people off. There's basically a new version every six months, but most of the changes are under the hood, meaning that the syntax, the way that you write code, the way you put your components together, your services, that there's no change on that for the most part. It's, it's, it's just the updates are to make it work better and faster. And I think the whole Angular 1 to Angular 2, it kind of scared a lot of people, especially people that put a lot of time into Angular 1 or, or Angular JS, whatever you want to call it, uh, because, you know, 1 and 2 are completely different frameworks. But 2 through now 6 are basically, they're all the same framework. They just have, you know, incremental updates and, and bug fixes and... Um, uh, new features and things like that. So don't let the way that they do their versioning discourage you and make you think that the whole framework is changing each version. In fact, you'll see that almost all of the changes here are uh, they're just under the hood improvements, um, library updates, additions, and, and optional stuff. Nothing that's going to cripple your Angular 5 application, at least from anything that I've read. Okay, and I've, I've done a lot of, of research on this. All right, so if you want to try out Angular 6 now, you can install it with the CLI as long as you install the CLI with the at next. Okay, if you do that and then you run ng new, whatever your app name, it's going to create a new Angular 6 application. Okay, if you want to test it out and experiment with it, um, if you want to upgrade a current app, an Angular 5 app, you can now use the ng update command, which is really cool. And you can add dash next and it'll just it'll just upgrade it to the next version. So since the update from Angular 2 to 4, there's been an overall theme that the Angular team strives for for every new release, and that's to make the framework smaller, faster, and easier to use. The main focus of most of the changes is to achieve one or, or all of these things. With Angular 5, there were a lot of changes under the hood, like uh, a build optimizer that eliminated unnecessary code, things like that. And they're continuing to make these types of changes and upgrades to improve the framework's performance. People do have to understand that Angular is not React. Okay, React is a library. It's much, much smaller. It includes much less. Angular is a complete framework that includes just a ton of different stuff in its core. So of course, it's always going to be bigger than React. It's always going to be bigger than Vue, um, unless they really, I don't know, unless they really find some amazing way to optimize it. But for the most part, it's good. It's just going to be bigger because it includes more. Um, but they are doing their best to minimize it. In RC2, they started only publishing what the CLI needs and includes, uh, only what your project needs in terms of, of uh, build and schematics inside your project's package.json. This leads to a much smaller global package for the CLI, which I believe is uh, around 23 megabytes or so, and it keeps improving. So they're, they're keeping with this, you know, stripping out what you don't need. The bundles will also be smaller in size, which of course will uh, make your, your app overall run faster and just a better overall experience. Now, as for the libraries, Angular 6 will be using Webpack 4 for module bundling. Webpack 4 has its own batch of new features. We'll be generating smaller modules through something called scope hoisting. This also goes into making things faster. It will also include or introduce a new way to connect, excuse me, to connect the modules within an app 
and a service, okay? So for instance, they're adding the ability for services to refer to modules so that if a service isn't being used, it disappears in order to make that bundle size smaller. Okay, so it's very dynamic in what, what gets loaded and what doesn't. Angular 6 will also include RxJS 6 or Reactive Extension 6. Um, and this is going to also reduce bundle size for common use cases. This should also make it easier to compose a synchronous or, or callback based code. There'll be support for TypeScript version 2.7, which I believe was released back in January. So it'll be much easier to code with conditional type declarations default declarations and strict class initialization. And if you want to look more into the individual features of these libraries, you can check out the docs for each one. All right, and then what's really cool is we're also going to get library support through the CLI, okay? So we'll be able to use ng generate library and then the library name, which has been something that's been requested for quite a while now. Um, so the CLI commands, as I just said, will have the new generate library command. We'll also be able to easily upgrade Angular, as I showed you in the, the second slide, I believe, by using ng update. And this includes all the core packages in your dependencies and your dev dependencies, and uh, things like RxJS, ZoneJS, TypeScript, etc. You'll also get the ng add command to easily add application features. So if you wanted to, for instance, start out with material design rather than a blank application, you could use ng add for that. It also supports turning apps into progressive web apps to support offline web pages. It also includes native script if you wanted to add that to an existing project. The ability to create progressive web apps is something that is really high on the list of features with the Angular team as well. All right, so we also have the addition of Bazel and the Clojure compiler. Okay, basically Bazel is a build system that Google uses for a ton of their own software, including their hundreds of Angular apps. It automates the building and testing of software, and it's similar to Maven, if you've ever heard of that. I believe Bazel is licensed under uh, the Apache license, but Google uses it to build the majority of their software. If you want to learn more about Bazel, you can go to bazel.build. I've never personally used it, but it looks very interesting. Before, if developers wanted to build and package their own libraries by hand, um, they had well, they had to do it by hand. And if they wanted to share components and services with other teams, they would have to do that by hand. But Bazel allows this to be integrated within the Angular ecosystem. And it's pretty advanced stuff. I would imagine it would be for more large scale enterprise front ends, but it shows you how much is invested into this framework and what's possible. Version six will also utilize the Clojure compiler, which is a bundling optimizer used to create JavaScript artifacts for nearly all Google web apps okay so this is stuff that Google actually uses in their company so they're they're integrating a lot of that stuff a lot of their internal workflow and their tool chain into this framework and that shows you how much they have invested into it closure supposedly does a better job in doing things like eliminating dead code uh, than webpack uh, webpack actually does all right, and here's a link here. I'll, I'll, if I remember, I'll include it in the description. And this goes, this is a Medium article that talks about what Google planned to do with Bazel and Clojure. And it's about a year old, but it basically talks about the plans they had for implementing these with Angular. And now we're seeing the result of that. So it's a pretty uh, interesting article. All right, so the Ivy Renderer. This um, this is a code name for a new renderer that will be used, and it will reduce the size of the application, and it'll make it compile faster. It will also increase flexibility, and the Angular team has also promised that the switch will be a smooth one with no breaking changes. So we'll have to see about that. But again, this this addition ties into their whole smaller, faster, easier theme. And you're going to see that throughout the next batch of versions of, of Angular. All right, so this is pretty cool. We, all, we have the component dev kit or the CDK, which includes over 30 UI based components. These are implemented in Angular Material, which is a separate library, but now you don't have to use that extra library as it will be included in the core package. 
okay so it includes things like responsive layouts so if you don't know flexbox or the grid system or anything like that you don't want to use bootstrap this will still give you a responsive layout which is really cool the cdk itself was released initially back in i think december of last year but it's it's being approved on and now you can use it uh, with angular core all right, so next is one of what I think is the, one of the coolest features added, and that's Angular Elements. What you can do is you can actually create an Angular component, and you can package it up as a custom element, and then you can publish it as a reusable web component. So you can take that web component and you can use it in a non-Angular project, whether it's a, you know just an HTML, CSS, JavaScript website or application or something built with another framework like React. And I think that's really cool that, that you can now use Angular to create something for a non-Angular project. So Angular 6 will also have schematic support and basically allow you to create a schematic or essentially a template and, and kind of integrate it with the CLI so you can quickly create environments that are convenient and familiar. You can apply transforms like creating a new component, updating code to avoid breaking changes, adding config options and so on. So essentially you can build your own scaffolding which promotes reusability and just saving you time rather than starting from scratch with every new application. All right, so let's take a, a look at some of the actual code workflow changes and there aren't much. As I've said, most of these things are they're just under the hood. There's some changes, but mostly additions to the code workflow. There's been some additions to the router, for instance. So before, if you wanted to, if you went to a URL that didn't match any requests, it would just take you to the, the index page or home page, whatever you want to call it. But now we can specify optional navigation URLs inside a list in the, the ngsw config file. Okay, and we can set URL patterns like an asterisk or an exclamation to go to any of these URLs. So maybe a 404 page or, or whatever it may be. Also, currently in navigation start, there's no way to know if the navigation was triggered imperatively or through the location change. And with the new navigation source, the source can be specified. And with the restored state, we can get the navigation ID, which leads to its current navigation. So in turn, we can handle uh, multiple use cases in routing. So we can make our routing more efficient, basically, is what it comes down to. Uh, we also have the ng model change event, which is emitted after a value and its validity, validity <laughs> are updated on its control. Now, previously, it was emitted before it was updated as the updated value of the control is available. This makes the, the handler a bit more powerful. There's also been some improvements with form pattern val uh, validators. So before version six, pattern validators shouldn't contain line boundaries like and or or. These would make the validators fail, but now validators are checked before adding line boundaries. So validators will work as expected with or without line boundaries. So we have a bit more uh, of a cleaner syntax when it comes to validation. We also have added validators for array method, the array method of the form builder. Before version six, there was no way to pass multiple validators to the form builder dot array method. And we can do that now with version six. Okay, we also have an option for, or a new option for gener a generic type of element ref, which will allow us to get a hold of the native element and permit direct access to the DOM. All right, so not much here, um, at least in my opinion, but uh, just a couple, couple changes or a couple new things that you can do in your code workflow. All right, guys, so that's it. Keep in mind, I haven't personally used any of this yet. Like I said, this is compiled from different reputable sources. I just wanted to kind of create a video that's, you know, wraps everything up into an easy to digest summary video. And I will be doing some more tutorials on Angular using version six in the future and possibly a mean stack course or series. Uh, but that's it, guys. I also just want to mention that uh, this will be my last video from this office. I'm moving and I have to get everything moved over and set up in the new place. So it might be a couple more days in between videos um, just for net, just for now until everything's set up. Uh, but once I'm all set up, we'll be hitting the, the tutorials hard again. So that's it. Thanks, guys. And I will see you next time.